Welcome to our panel on pensions and endowments. Uh, today we are going to be focusing on the long-term uh, perspective of this kind of vehicles and the advantages that they possess in terms of investing. I have my fellow panelists here. Kate Eriksson is the head of investments at Alto University Endowment, and Göktürk Işık Pınar is the chief investment officer at Ak Asset Management. Uh, Long-term investors such as uh, pensions and endowments play an important role in the formation of a deeper uh, financial and cap uh, uh, capital market. Uh, these investors do not have all or nothing approach. That is, they don't invest one day and disinvest in another day. They are always on the investment mode. So, I mean, at most they can do is uh, to switch between different type of instruments with the market conjecture, but they're always there. So uh, this type of uh, institutional in uh, investors uh, play a crucial role in terms of the uh, sustainable financial markets. Uh, for example, when we look to the uh, Turkish case, uh, the Turkish pension funds, uh, uh, over the last 16 years, I mean, 16 years prior, they came from virtually to uh, zero today to owning around 6% of the local government debts, 11% of the local corporate bonds, and 5% of the equities that are trading on Borsa Istanbul. Of course, these figures can be uh, enhanced, but still uh, they show the value added by these type of uh, institu institutional and long-term investors. Uh, as the portfolio manager, management plays a crucial role in terms of diverting the savings to the funding of the real economy, uh, now with the uh, launch of real estate and venture capital funds, they do have the opportunity to be with direct contact with the, with the real economy. We now have venture capital funds in Turkey that are investing into infrastructure projects that are investing into renewable energy fields such as wind and solar areas. Uh, we have venture funds investing into startup companies. On the other hand, we have real estate funds uh, investing from office spaces to residential areas to logistic centers and uh, the examples can be uh, extended. So these activities uh, enable the uh, in individual investors to get access to investment opportunities where they cannot achieve by themselves. So uh, this uh, also in return crea creates an enhancement of their uh, portfolio structures by means of diversification. So having talked a bit about the local examples, Göktürk, yeah. uh, how do you think the pension fund industry uh, handling this long-term asset management pursued globally? I mean, uh, how are the allocation strategies handled? Uh, how do they diversify? Are there diversification areas that can create additional value? Yeah, um, thank you. Um, thank you for, for this great event to CFA Society and uh, some of the forum part, uh, participants. I would like to welcome you to Istanbul as well. Uh, I'm CIO of um, Akaset Management, also responsible of alternatives. We manage 39 billion Turkish Turkish lira, um, almost like 6.5 billion uh, dollars. Uh, typical um, uh, assets that we manage, pension, mutual funds, and alternatives. Well, objective of pension funds to provide pensioners with long-term um, retirement age income. The challenge is to balance short-term volatilities um, with a long-term strategic allocation. Uh, clearly, there's a trend towards uh, private market. Um, this exhibit one actually demonstrates that um, the uh, private market was driven by endowments like Cathy is um, currently responsible of. Between 1998 to 2008, public uh, private market assets, allocation of endowments went up from 30% to 70%, heavily driven by the Anglo-Saxon system, of course. Uh, the demand for illiquid assets was mainly driven by good returns. Um, studies suggest that the private equity funds um, delivering consisting over 4% better return over um, public equities for last three decades. And private pension fund allocation also went up from 7% to 26% during the same period. Uh, 
Um, overall, private market fundraising uh, reached all-time high, $5 trillion uh, in 2008. And private equity reached almost $2.5 trillion. Private debt, natural resources, and infrastructure grew um, very fast and fastest. First, as with anything else, technology made capital markets more accessible. Capital raising became a lot easier. And second, there's more money in the system. And third, private equity industry, governance and compliance has developed significantly since 1990s. Uh, in this chart, we see global private equity net asset value has grown sevenfold since 2002, outpacing the public equities. Companies prefer to be listed less and less. A typical IPO cost of 5% or being listed, cost of being listed uh, being higher, or maybe disclosure or recur, uh, reporting requirements makes it harder. Investors prefer private capital. In 1990, there was uh, 8,000 companies uh, listed in the US equity market. Today, it is just over 4,000 companies. Spotify did not need to raise um, public capital. It has raised $2.7 billion before DPO in S&P. Uber ridden $21 billion of valuation with the VC capital. Companies only go public when it's too large to cash out uh, at the, by the private markets. Therefore, public market investors miss out on significant period of growth. Past year, $7 billion raised in the Central Eastern Europe, $2 billion was publicly raised, a raise $5 billion was privately raised. Trend towards private markets, not over. Survey by EY indicates that 34% of investors are willing to invest more into the private equity. Studies also show that expected return for all asset classes are declining. For example, in this table, you can see that the S&P falls to 5.4%, whereas private equity return uh, ex expectations decline, but, but only slightly to 10.6%. Studies also suggest that the expected risk return curve shifts downwards in all asset classes, but in this picture, private equity still remains most attractive. It has been the case in Turkey as well. Based on CalPERS, um, Turkish private equity industry returns 4.5 times between 2012 and 2018. This is much higher than the pension saving, which delivered around 90% cumulative return between 2012 and 2018. Pretty much in line with the fixed income and equity returns, bland returns of um, Turkey. Rotation towards, I believe, uh, private equity, uh, distressed debt, mezzanine finance, VC, uh, v venture capital, could tackle the wealth erosion problem and turn it into a creation. Thank you. Thank you for that insight. Uh, so now let's pass on to the endowment subject. Today we have a very expert panelist on, on, on this subject. Kati has set up the endowment management operations at Alto University from scratch, where she currently heads the investments. Uh, Alto University investment, uh, uh, University endowment has 1.1 billion uh, euros of asset under management and is amongst the five uh, university endowments in Europe. So, Kati, could you please uh, briefly uh, describe the endowment model to us? How is it different from the pension funds? And how did you outline the investment strategy for your university endowment, given your goals and also given the current low-yielding uh, financial environment? Sure. I kynler purada olmaktan kurur duyujorum. Tässä kyllä. So uh, let's kick off with a brief history of Aldi University. Aldi University was set up 10 years ago when we merged three old universities, business school, tech school, and art school. And at that time, we fundraised from corporates and alumni, and, and Finnish government incentivized us that each euro, euro we get as a donation, we get two and a half euros from the government. So this is how we get our endowment capital of 700 million euros which was all in cash 2010. Um, the purpose of the, um, 
let me see if I push the right buttons, thanks. So purpose of the ALDE University endowment, and I, I suppose endowments in general, is to generate funding to the university operations so that we actually enable university to fulfill its strategic goals. So in our case, for example, ALDE University very committed to an advance the sustainable development goals. We have multidisciplinary fields of study, a huge um, push on innovation, research, education, obviously, also uh, startup ecosystem that we have in place. All of this is partly funded for the, for, from the um, endowment uh, real return generation. What is different about endowments, for example, to the pension funds? Uh, I would say two things might be more, but two kind of obvious ones that comes to my mind. One is that um, even though obviously both endowments, pension funds, very long term in their nature, still pension have some, so some sort of maturity in their liability structure. But endowments, we are perpetual funds. We are here to stay from this point to eternity, if you, if you may. And the other, I think, um, bigger uh, aspect that has an impact on the, the asset allocation side is that oftentimes, and I think most of the time or every time, pension funds are regulated in some sense. They have regulation or solvency regulation or regulation regarding the liabilities that affects the, the asset allocation decisions of, of the pension fund managers. Endowments, not really. We have our spending liability, but that is actually spending policy that we have written ourselves to set the liability for us. And, and, and rest is basically up, up, up to, to the, the risk uh, ambition of, of, of the university board. Uh, we have two goals. One goal is to preserve and accumulate the real value of the endowment capital in the long run. And then in the medium term, we need to provide stable and a pre predictable spending. So right away, the whole room understands that from the portfolio construction point of view, these are two different portfolios. And these goals potentially conflicting. So uh, these potentially conflicting goals, together with this current investment environment that we are in, has really formed our strategy. When I joined uh, five and a half years ago as first head of investment at Aalto University. We literally took blank sheet of paper to think what is the smart way to invest for Aalto University. As mentioned, now we have 1.1 billion euros uh, under management, four and a half people to run the whole operation. So basically what we do, we focus on asset allocation and manager selection. We don't have any direct investments in our portfolio. So this is our strategy that you see in one slide. So, so basically, our endowment strategy uh, starts from the notion that we have only one portfolio. One portfolio. And there we have this stance, one for all and all for one, because when I started, we were three people. We were like three musketeers running the uh, endowment. But, but the thing is that we don't want to have separate equity portfolio, separate fixed income portfolio, or some sort of sub-optimized alternative risk portfolio. We, we are running one portfolio, and, and, and everything that we put in the portfolio should uh, fulfill those goals that have been set to us. We have three building blocks, liquidity, growth, and diversifying sources of return. Every building block has clearly defined role in the portfolio. Liquidity is for spending, capital calls, utilizing market opportunities. When these regulated um, institutions are forced to sell, we are free to buy. And then the, the biggest component is growth, obviously, because our goal is to preserve and accumulate the real value of the endowment capital. So we are, uh, the growth component is basically return-seeking strategy to fulfill that, uh, that goal. Everything that goes into the growth bucket is, is basically in its risk and return profile similar to equities. The starting point is always cheap equity beta, but then we vary. We, in some regions, we want to have active managers, for example, in EM, 
we we wanted to add the illiquidity because that's obvious obvious for long-term investor perpetual fund like us so we have private equity program in place and then credit risk we want to have in, in this type of environment sources of carry in the portfolio so basically high yield emerging market debt and and then alternative credit strategies which are for us um, a special situation strategies and, and then distressed debt. So basically, these are the building blocks for the growth, always starting from cheap equity beta, and then you make those decisions compared to that starting point. And the third uh, building block is diversifying uh, sources of return. The goal and the role of this building block is actually, as you see clearly, that this portfolio is very equity risk dominant. So we want to get some diversifying sources of return not hedge the equity risk, but to diversify. And, 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 and namely in this environment when we have very low yield and negative rates uh, where I come from, so, so there isn't really place for diversification in the traditional 60-40 portfolio. So we focus on alternative risk st strategies. And for us that means long short strategies, uh, namely trend following strategies, systematic multi-factor strategies, uh, and then some other hedge fund strategies, such as uh, relative value, equity market neutral, and macro strategies. So in this environment, obviously, this, I think this strategy is ve very suited for it, because we are not leaning on, on that kind of traditional notion of, of, of balanced portfolio of fixed income and equities. Uh, and then I think more kind of in a dynamic, dynamic way, we have been increasing our liquidity in the portfolio, and at the same time, we are increasing the illiquidity in the portfolio, and, and, and trying to be prepared whatever lies ahead. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so in the introduction part of our conversation, we have talked about the increased uh, utilization of alternative asset classes in pension funds. Uh, once again, when we come to the Turkish example, for example, over the last three years, uh, starting once again from zero, uh, the real estate funds established in Turkey has uh, reached the proximity of one billion uh, US dollars and the venture capital funds to the proximity of 300 million US dollars. And when we look to the global context, we uh, see the same trend. I mean, there is an increased usage of, of uh, alternative asset classes. Uh, I have just a couple of several statistics here with me that I want to share with you. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, uh, private equity and real estate investment, uh, investments, the private equity investments uh, occupy 5.4% of the private pensions globally, 5.8% uh, of the public pensions, and 11% of the endowments and foundations. The real estate investments of the private pensions uh, stands around 7.9%, uh, 9% per, uh, 9 for public pensions, and 6% for the endowments and foundations. And lastly, the infrastructures uh, investments start from 2.5% uh, to the from the uh, private pension area, increase up to 3.5% in the endowments and foundations. But when we look to the numbers as a total, I mean, we are starting from around 15 to 16% uh, in the uh, private pension universe and increasing just to uh, just above 20% in uh, endowments and foundations, which provide an evidence. Uh, in terms of the increased utilization of this kind of uh, investment tools. So, Gökdük, once again, uh, back to you. Uh, we know that you are quite active in terms of alternative uh, investments area. Can you elaborate uh, on your experience here? Uh, how do you think this kind of uh, investment uh, create additional value? And how does it fit with the long-term investment perspective of these kind of institutional investors? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity as well um, to discuss um, with you um, Turkey's saving pool. Um, currently, is approximately pension plus mutual 245 billion Turkish dirham, which we can define as a saving pool. Uh, but we need to find ways to bring in foundations and life insurance firms, which stay out of the capital markets at the moment. 
and there, has, there remains uh, almost um, a 90 billion uh, Turkish lira. And we've been estimating that the, um, with the current growth pace, that the Turkish saving pool will reach uh, by 2023, $100 billion. So it's a big uh, a potential um, an opportunity uh, as well uh, for the country um, to address its uh, problems and areas require uh, investing. Um, we need to find ways to finance growing firms, I believe, and think outside the box, providing financing um, another remedy for failing firms, which we've been doing lately. Uh, it's a rather misallocation of capital. Uh, you know, you cannot create value in the long term by financing failing firms. You can do it by providing value-added financing to growing firms. The question is how to design capital markets to meet financing need of um, growing firms. Um, recently, um, it came out that the UK has intention to allocate up to 5% um, of defined contribution to invest into venture capital. So there's a strong trend again in this area. Um, in my experience, uh, in Turkey, probably elsewhere as well, small companies struggle to shift from um, family-driven um, management style to professional management style, from local markets to global markets, like we heard in the case of Logo uh, as well. Um, we set up the first Turkey domicile private equity fund in 2016. We have 14 different pension funds investing into our fund. Um, we typically do growth equity. Um, we invest into export-driven, uh, positive EBIT, EBITDA generating companies. Um, we like manufacturing and innovation. Um, what we do uh, differently from, um, differently as a minority investor, we have a pool of advisors um, uh, supporting areas like HR, organizational issues, financial transparency, and corporate culture. Um, we help structuring long-term strategy of the firms at the board level. Um, we do involve in the operations if required. Um, I think as an emerging market private equity investor, you have to involve um, a little more on the operations. Uh, and operational uh, private equity is becoming more trending uh, in recent years. Um, we, you may call this uh, you may call us like, a, we almost uh, do like an impact investing. The projects that we invest um, actually adds value to the society. Um, so basically, uh, we have invested into solar energy, as you mentioned before, in uh, three different areas on the aging coast of Turkey, 20 megawatt. Um, in order to have a reliable EPC and operational uh, process, we have built 50-50 um, joint SPV with our EPC partners. I think this opened up a platform uh, for a renewable energy fund in Turkey. These were the first ones that actually occurred in Turkish capital markets. We've invested into a vehicle tracking company and turned them into an industrial IoT firm. Uh, the company is now listed with the Deloitte's Fast 50 technology list. Um, with this company, we're connecting devices, indoor tracking, temperature, humidity tracking, machine working time, production tracking. Um, for example, we follow um, forklifts at Coca-Cola factory, so we prevent any forklift accidents. Actually, it's a, wide pro it's a big problem in the factory floor. Um, we supply under Vodafone red control. Um, now, we're, with this company, we're in a process of expanding our business to Italy and Egypt. Um, we strongly believe uh, abilities of our partners and willingness to succeed. Um, we, we have a minority stake at the medical, uh, chemical and medical device producer uh, with a wide range of products have uh, EC and FDA approved. Um, we are in exporting to 112 countries. 85% of the sales are export. Um, we experienced advisors. We've taken company through restructuring. Uh, as part of this project, uh, the organization chart has been uh, re-engined, sales and marketing production. As I said, we are um, uh, more um, operational private equity uh, uh, kind of um, approach um, uh, to our investments. Uh, we set up an HR department in this firm. Um, 
lately we've invested in a uh, carbon fiber company um, that they weave carbon fiber, fiber into a, a material. Uh, we use Turkey domicile um, manufacturers uh, fiber as well as Japan's Torai and Mitsubishi. And from Japan we import and we export. Um, now the total exports are 70% of our sales. Um, now we're looking um, at the moment, we're trying to get an uh, aerospace certificate. And most recently, what we like to do is we like to um, add to the ecosystem as well, the VC ecosystem. So most recently, we've invested in a, uh, 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 in an omni-channel manager, digital marketing automation product manager with a, a local um, VC firm named um, 212 Capital. Um, our software with, in this, with this firm manages communication of firms with their clients. 60% export driven, also at the Deloitte's fast growing list. Um, we're, not expect, we're now expanding to Central Eastern Europe. Um, we believe in selecting right entrepreneur, uh, not only balance sheet success, individuals with positive attitude and success driven and experience on the field. Uh, so, Kati, in the first section, we talked about your approach uh, to investments as Alto University Endowment. Uh, Göktürk has uh, talked about the capability of alternative investments uh, to uh, create value added. And also, previously, I shared some statistics uh, which highlight that private equity uh, occupies almost uh, more than half of the alternative investments uh, of the endowments and foundations. So can you uh, also elaborate on your private equity program? Uh, what's the role of uh, private equity in endowment portfolio and how did you implement that? Sure. So uh, obviously the role of the private equity is a long-term return enhancing part of our total portfolio. As I said, the, the um, the goal for us is to, to preserve and accumulate the real value. So we need to have such, uh, such a strategies in our portfolio. We, with private equity, namely, we aim to harvest illiquidity premium. Uh, and obviously, as a perpetual fund, we are able to do that. Then again, skill premium. Because in private equity, you really need to have a skillful managers to provide those returns that you are, you are looking for from that asset class. But obviously that comes with the price, with the manager dispersion, which is, which is huge. And then a little bit size premium also, because we are focusing on the smaller, smaller end of the, the PE market. Um, in our strategy, we don't have any illusion of diversification in private equity. Private equity is equity risk for us. It is in some way alternative assets. It is equity risk, so it sits, sits in the equity risk bucket. Uh, to Bay uh, referred to shift from public to, to private, and that is also something that we, we consider, because obviously as, as the listed market is shrinking and we are perpetual fund, we want to get exposure, uh, exposure to the broad market. We, we, we obviously want to include private small growth companies in our portfolio, and, and private equity is the way to do that. I think two things you need to consider when investing in private equity funds, as we are. One is that you need to get access to the best managers, and the other one is that you need to be disciplined in, in your commitment. There isn't really a way to time private equity market, because the day that I make a decision, of investing or making a commitment to a certain fund, the time when it gets, actually the, the capital gets to the work, it, it's really not in my hands to time the private equity market. So when we started laying out the strategy five years ago, we knew what we wanted from, from our private equity um, uh, program. We wanted to get robots, a robust start for the investing in PE so that our board would be happy after uh, 10 or so years. And obviously, thinking about building up your own knowledge, we need to get knowledge transfer to, to my team, and also starting to build up, build up relationships with GPs, because private equity very much is a relationship business. And, and when we were set up 10 years ago, when I joined five years ago, we didn't know anyone, nobody knew us. <laughs> so I said to my team, this is not the best starting point. 
So, and, and, and on top of that, we notice that many of the off-the-shelf product, like fund of funds in private equity, over-diversified and too expensive, at least for us. So we decided to set up our own fund. We set up our own fund, we wrote the strategy, and we searched manager to run the fund. And we ended up uh, partnering with Hamilton Lane, uh, whom our Philadelphia-based private markets firm with background in pension fund advisory business. And that really brought kind of the joint culture in our thinking, I would say. Um, the strategy that we wrote down, we wanted to keep it simple because we wanted to get the robot start and, 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 and pretty concentrated for this first stage of implementation. And I, the idea is actually we are now planting the seeds for, for the future. So it makes you really humble to take those first steps. And obviously these steps evolve as, as, as time goes by. But what we decided to do, we, we have 150 million euros commitment. So we target 10% private equity allocation in our portfolio in this initial phase. I would argue, I don't have the board's approval yet, but I, w I hope that in the long term, medium term, that would uh, double at least. But uh, we started with 25% uh, allocation to secondaries. Why is that? That is that we started from zero, basically. So we wanted to get that vintage diversification from this point of time. And also, we wanted to get our capital to work. Uh, secondaries for, for us is more opportunistic in nature. So many types of strategies for, from all over the world can come into that part of the program. And actually, we finished our first deal in Turkey last week. Um, and then 75% of the total por portfolio will be allocated between 10 to 13 managers, small uh, and mid buyout, Europe and US. So very plain vanilla strategy. And, and maybe one important thing to, to note is that as part of the due diligence, Hamilton Lane takes all financially material considerations including sustainability considerations into account when they select GPs to our fund. Um, managers are giving ESG ratings and are expected to engage on ESG issues with portfolio companies. We also exclude coal mining and weapons from our private equity program as we do not see the sustainable long-term growth potential in these industries. As the focus in the private equity value creation is the operational improvement of the portfolio companies, there is a huge potential, in, in my opinion, to either mitigate risks or grasp opportunities by integrating ESG in private equity investing. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, we are running uh, a bit short on time, so we have uh, quite a bit of questions. I will just combine a couple of them and ask one question to each participant. So. I am sorry if I cannot touch on the, all of the questions. Uh, we talked about the advantages of these kind of tools, but um, to start uh, to go there, we need to have savings. Would you have any short uh, uptake on the uh, environment or recommendations about how uh, we can uh, enhance the saving ratios in Turkey? This is one of the questions that I can ask to you. Okay. Um. Well, it has to be how we can enhance the savings ratio in, 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 in Turkey. Well, um, I think we need to provide um, right products um, that the individuals feel um, have some sort of connection with the product and feel the reliability of it. I mean, for years, um, capital markets, um, uh, the products that we introduce, they are typically um, equities and fixed income and don't really offer um, variety that the, the real world has uh, offering. Um, so that's why I think um, private markets will help um, increasing um, savings ratio in a sense that like, um, uh, in, in a sense that it will open up a, a gate uh, and, and, uh, and a tool that they wouldn't be able to do it um, in their own, uh, with their own saving. Yeah, and we know that uh, the government has uh, several uh, pre-working areas about 
uh, enhancing the savings and setting up some new schemes like supplementary pension system. So we are hopefully going to be observing these developments to create more savings to then divert them to the capital markets. Uh, Kati, uh, with your experience on endowment universe, would you have any recommendations to, to the uh, Turkish end <laughs> endowment side? I mean, uh, Turkey is an emerging country and there is an endowment activity. Uh, of course, uh, you have to be expert to have detailed uh, uptake on Turkish side, but as a general uh, recommendation, I mean, what would you sum up uh, taken from your experiences? You mean endowments for universities exactly. in general? Exactly. Yeah, that, that's also a very new thing in Finland because traditionally Finnish universities have been government funded operations, basically providing education to the local students. But now this is a different setup when we open for fundraise and uh, we don't have that donating culture in Finland. We pay high taxes, so we think that that should cover. <laughs> that should cover. So, so that, that is actually a very, very new thing in Finland as well. But thinking about now that I, what I've learned during, during my period here at Aldo, Aldo University, actually for university, very powerful toolbox, if I may say, the, the, the endowment capital because it, it is an in independent source of funding. But, but how you promote, at least in our case, government, as I said, incentivized us in fundraising. So they understood, but that, very, that is very deep in Finnish culture. We are a small country, nobody speaks our language, so our people need to be educated in order to, 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 to be competitive. So, so I think our, our, our government kind of understood that this might be a way to, to kind of uh, support the universities. But obviously then you need to set up a very uh, kind of solid governance and, and operating framework in, for that uh, operation to succeed. And hopefully, even though we just took the first steps, I hope we will, we will make it at the end. Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> presentation prior to us has mentioned about, you know, good investments and mm -hmm. I think the endo university endowment uh, topic is, is, is an important example to this subject. Yes. So, okay. thank you very much for your patience and to my panelists. Thank you. <laughs>